All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for making it today. This is my first Zoom webinar, so I hope it goes well. As I'm going to be giving a presentation that I gave at the NICAR conference in New Orleans last month. And this time I'm going to be doing it from the one clean corner in my living room. So without further ado, let me share some slides and we'll get started. All right, so I'm going to be presenting on Document Cloud, and there's a lot of exciting new developments to the platform. For those of you who are unfamiliar, this is what Document Cloud looks like or has looked like. And just for some context, Document Cloud launched over 10 years ago, and it's sort of the primary way that journalists deal with primary source documents, especially in the United States. Um, we've had over 100 million pages of primary source documents uploaded by over 3,000 newsrooms. Those documents have been embedded on news articles that have cumulatively been viewed over one and a half billion times. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the platform, it's sort of an all-in-one way of dealing with documents that you might get from a document dump or an investigation or just documents you have on hand. And the first step, um, if you have some docs, you can upload them onto documentcloud.org. It's a website. Um, so you might upload one PDF file or an entire collection of PDFs. Once they're uploaded, you can organize them. You can put them into projects, which are basically collections of documents or you can add tags, key value pairs, other ways to add metadata to the document that you can later search over. You can also analyze documents. So Document Cloud will pull the text out of documents, even those that only are scanned pages, it'll OCR the document, and it'll pull out entities, so people, places, and organizations that are in the document and just give you a really quick way to scan through that. Um, further, once you have documents uploaded on Document Cloud, you can annotate them so you can add notes that are shared with collaborators or the public once you embed your document. And you can annotate um, different regions. It's basically like highlighting a page and adding some of your own voice to what's happening in the document. Um, then all the text is pulled out of Document Cloud, so there's really powerful search features. You can search over your collection of documents for specific phrases, text, fields, um, or within a single document, you can look for text. And once you have sort of a usable product, some people just upload and then embed their document directly to news articles. Other people do a lot of analysis and they will process the documents and add their own annotations before embedding them. But the embed is a really powerful feature to report on documents and include them in your actual news article. It's basically like a PDF viewer, but it's um, fast and it'll have your annotations on top of it and allow the reader to look through the text. Um, we also wanna emphasize that Document Cloud is really about supporting journalists. We're always interested in augmenting people's reporting if they wanna do large scale analyses or interactives with the tool. We're really interested in helping. We don't want to just be a tool people use. We want to be a part of that process. All right, so with that said, introducing the new Document Cloud data. And this is what it looks like when you start off, when you go to the home page. And then when you go in, it looks like this. Now, the April Fools, that's the old Document Cloud. Um, this is what the new interface looks like, but it's useful to just kind of see how we've made the interface more modern. This is sort of the manager view where you manage all the documents you've uploaded, organize them into products, projects, excuse me, and add metadata and things like that. We really tried to just give it a modern flavor. So let's just look at what you do when you first get to Document Cloud on the new beta. So you upload some documents. You can bulk upload up to 1,000 documents simultaneously, PDF files. Most people will probably only do one or a few at a time, but those power tools exist because some journalists are real power users of our tool, and we like to support that. 
once the documents have been uploaded, they start to process. And this is a really crucial new feature we've added, progress bars. The previous document cloud version didn't have progress bars and you'd have no real way of knowing how long your document would take, which is especially frustrating when it's a really big one that might take a while. For those of you who don't know sort of what it means to process a document, I just wanted to do a quick aside, which will turn into a longer aside actually on the processing architecture. So most of you are probably familiar with PDF files. They're essentially collections of pages that have images and text on them. Um, once you get into, a, once you look at PDF files, you'll realize they come in all shapes and forms. Some PDF files can have lots of pages, especially ones we've gotten, which have had thousands of pages at times. And also journalists often want to upload a lot of PDFs simultaneously. Another challenge with processing is scanned documents. So if you have a document that's just an image of text, but it's not actually selectable, we go the extra mile and do the processing um, to pull that text out. So for every page that you upload into Document Cloud, we first take sort of snapshots of the pages at different sizes, which then feeds into the viewer. Um, excuse the camera icon, I made it with low, limited design budget. <laughs> And then we use optical character recognition or OCR to pull the text out of the images. So this is basically taking a scanned document and converting it into text that you can search through. So previously, Document Cloud did processing by maintaining a fleet of a fixed number of computers to do all the processing. So essentially, as documents get uploaded and processed, they get assigned to computers that aren't processing anything currently, and then they get processed. But what happens if too many documents are uploaded simultaneously? Essentially, you have to wait in a queue for documents to get processed and the computers to get freed up. And at times, especially in heavily newsworthy moments, that queue can be very long. And so we'd often get tweets from Document Cloud Power users who would be like, I'm so sorry for what I'm about to do. I'm going to upload 3,000 documents at once. And they knew they could single-handedly take our platform down because of the limitations in the processing stack. So you can essentially visualize the problems we had as traffic on a congested road where you only have a fixed number of lanes Eventually, enough documents get processed and there's traffic jams. So as a case study, the Mueller report posed a lot of problems. So I can't believe it's almost been a year since it was dropped by the Department of Justice. They released this 448-page document um, on Russian interference in the 2016 election. And let's just see if this creates sort of what we call a document cloud disaster situation. Is it highly newsworthy? Yes, lots of journalists are gonna to wanna to process this document with our system at the same time. Is it scanned but not OCR'd? Yes, it's essentially, when they first released it, it was just images of text, but you couldn't select the text, so we have to go through the extra processing hurdle of pulling that out. And lastly, it's really long. So it checked all the boxes of creating a disaster scenario. And on that fateful April day, over 100 journalists uploaded the report at the same time, and we ended up having a really long queue, and it essentially brought our service to a halt during the time when it was needed most. So having a fixed number of computers to handle all these documents didn't work when there was a really heavy breaking news situation. All right, so with that said, I wanted to talk about the new processing architecture and how we address this because in breaking new situations, speed and scalability are a really big deal. So we built Document Cloud from the ground up to address these concerns. We transitioned to what's called a serverless architecture. So instead of maintaining a fixed number of computers that can get overwhelmed, we use serverless computing, which is essentially like having a limitless pool of microcomputers, and you can tune them each to do a specific task. So you, <clears throat> you might have one microcomputer that manages receiving documents, 
says, okay, I received a document with 230 pages, and then it can delegate it to 230 helper computers that all handle a specific task, like pulling out images or text from each page. So basically with the new architecture, everything can be extremely highly parallelized and the little microcomputers can all coordinate to do things as efficiently as possible. And there's no scalability concerns, which means that the traffic jams, excuse my road metaphor, are a thing of the past. Essentially, you can just add a new lane anytime you need to and documents get processed really quickly. So let's take a look at the Mueller report again. New document cloud is optimized for these breaking news situations. We've thrown the Mueller report into the new system more times than I can even count. And the system turns out to be really, really, really fast. So this metric right here is Mueller's per hour. Let's just take a look. So I played with Amazon and Google's OCR services, which are sort of industry leaders. And Amazon took nearly 10 minutes to OCR the 448 page document. Google did pretty admirably at around three minutes to OCR every page. And the new document cloud beta took 26 seconds during one of the tests. And yeah, that's, that's really fast. So let's see what it looks like in action. I have a little timer at the ready here. So let's upload documents. And here I'm going to drag in two documents, actually. One is the non-OCR Mueller report, and the other is the CIA report that's already OCR, but it's 1,900 pages. And I uploaded this on really slow Wi-Fi, so let's just zoom ahead in the video here. And I'll start the timer right when it finishes. All right, so it finishes uploading. So now it's processing these two documents. You can see it already pulled the page count out for both documents. And here goes our progress bar. And starting to pick up here. It's, oh, oh, wow, that's going really fast. Let's see how we're doing here. Will we beat 26 seconds? Yep. And so we just processed about 2,300 pages in 23 seconds. And let's see, if we jump into the Mueller report and scroll around, you can see it pulled out every page. It's all processed. We can jump into the text view to see how the OCR did. It's not perfect, you know, because it's OCR, but it's pretty good. So we can try searching through the document to see if everything is indexed already. So let's search for, I don't know, Russia, for instance. And we get all our occurrences. You can see them on the side of the document as you're going through it. And there we go. So we've converted these documents in almost real time to useful data that you can search through and analyze pretty efficiently. All right. So that was the processing. Let's talk about some of the other new features on the beta. A big one was mobile first design. Old document cloud is not that mobile friendly and we've had a lot of problems with that, especially for embeds. So we designed everything to be very mobile friendly. Here's me playing with two iPhone simulators at the same time on my MacBook, just to really test out the mobile features. And the website works pretty well. You can do both views, you can do dialogues, create projects. Um, yeah, so it's pretty mobile friendly. I'm even working on a pinch zoom document viewer. That will just make the process even more delightful. Um, no, sorry, just lost the window. There we go. All right, so yeah, that's pinch zooming. Okay, so other document cloud beta features are document tagging. So this is a feature old document cloud has, but we added some new twists to it. This essentially allows you to add arbitrary metadata to your documents that you can later filter on. So let's see how that looks. We have our newly uploaded Mueller report and let's edit the document data and we can just add a tag like Mueller for instance. If we were dealing with lots of Mueller documents, it might be useful, I'll pause it here. Um, we can then add another thing. So 
Here, if you click on the tag drop down, you can see key value pairs are possible to add. And these just give you more precise categorization of your documents. You can mix tags and key value pairs. Old Document Cloud didn't have tags, which I think are a useful thing for, for quick uh, document metadata adding. So if we wanted to add some key value pairs, we could put in, for instance, year, we could say 2020. And these are just arbitrary fields. But as long as we're consistent internally, we create essentially like a database we can search over. So if we tag all our documents with types, we can then look at all the reports in a single search query and things like that. And then you can see the tags show up here. And I'll show you in a bit how you can search on those. Um, as a hint, you can just click on them to instantly filter on them. All right, so there's a slew of new advanced search features as well on the beta. And these just give you really powerful tools to sift through documents. So the default view is searching within your own document collection. That just shows up when you log in. And that's just your user. You can then add fields to your search query. So if you wanted to search for documents with the title Muller, then you can do title colon and then whatever title you want. You can add a, a minus before a field to exclude it from the search. And this also shows using quotes. So let's say we wanted to exclude documents that have the title test document. The quotes allow you to use spaces within there and count it as one unit. So this effectively excludes that. You can also use a plus operator to explicitly include something. If you use a lot of fields, it might, not, it might just find documents that match a few of them. So this lets you be very explicit about it. And if you don't specify a field, then it'll do an exact, it'll do a text match within your document's page text. So here you can see the quotes again. Basically, if we didn't have the quotes around met with, then it would find documents that contain the, the text met and the text with, but not necessarily next to each other. The quotes say, find me the text met with as an exact phrase match. All right, now let's get to some cool things. So there's a tilde operator to find matches with some spelling tolerance. So I don't know, let's just say we want to find the text Vladimir, but we're worried the OCR might have accidentally put a typo in or spelled it wrong. If we say Vladimir tilde three, that means find that text with a spelling tolerance of three. So like up to three letters can be different and it'll still match that. So like Vladimir without the I there would still match. And that can be really useful. All right, now for the real power users, you can use Boolean operators. So, and, or, and not, all caps to allow you to do special things. So let's say we wanted to search within one of two of my projects, for instance, and I have a project called Molar and a project called Politics. Using the parentheses here and the or in between these two projects are saying, find documents within my personal collection that belong to either this project or this project. And you can use that with and not as well. You can also, we saw tags before, you can specify tags by doing data underscore underscore tag colon. And then if you have a document with the tag hello, it'll find that. If you wanted to do key value pairs, I think it's data underscore and then the key name colon and then the value. And then if you want to get really out there, you can search for documents based on page count. So this syntax is saying, let's find documents with at least 100 pages. There's also autocomplete, so you can filter on like the access level, which is sort of the privacy level for the document. And it'll give you a little drop down after you type in access colon that shows you what the available options are with a little description. It also works when you type in like project colon, it'll show all your projects. And then you can select one or start typing and it'll fill it out and autocomplete. So we tried to make it really user friendly and non obtrusive. And just like the old document cloud, when you search for some text within a document, it'll show all the matching documents, but it'll also show just some snippets of matching pages to just really give you a quick glance. All right, also, if we're within a document, there's search tools. So if we type in, we did Russia before, let's say we wanted to find something a little more advanced. So if we search Russia Trump, and then 
we put that in quotes and then do a tilde and then a number. This is kind of like the spelling tolerance before. This is saying find instances of Russia and Trump that are no more than five words apart. This is just an example query. Let's see what happens. And there you can see it's already found some potentially interesting passages. So mastering these search operators, you can get pretty deep with all this stuff, but it can end up being pretty powerful, especially when you want to quickly get to the bottom of some documents you've uploaded. All right, there's also different access controls on projects and annotations that old document cloud didn't have really. So when you create projects, you can bring collaborators on. And this is really useful if you want to like bridge newsrooms or invite freelancers onto your project. Previously, everyone you added to a project would basically be an admin and be able to edit users and everything. Um, but now, I don't know why that's not playing. There we go. Now you can um, select admin, which is basically gives users any permission. You can do edit, which gives users the permission to edit the document, but not the project metadata. Or you can give uh, project collaborators view access, which means they can only view the documents, they can't edit them. Yeah, so also when you're creating notes, if you hit annotate in the document viewer and drag over a region on the page, you can then annotate it, put in some data, some text, and then you can select your access level. So private notes are visible just to you, collaborators are visible to people who can edit the document, and public is visible to anyone who has access to the document. Once you create a note, unlike old document cloud, you can actually change the access and update it, which is a highly requested feature. All right, we also took some design cues from Gmail. We have checkbox based selection tools. So you can hit the checkbox there to select all your documents in the current view, or you can just select a few. Once you select them, you can do edit actions on them, or you can uh, add them to projects using this menu. So here we're going to add those two documents to this project called Newsworthy. You can see it tells us that if you click it again, it'll remove those projects, or the, sorry, those documents from the project. You can see our projects are here on the left. These are just ones I made for this demo, but you can create your own. All right, and then we're winding up here. Lastly, I wanted to talk about embedding. Let's say you have some website and you wanna embed your document inside that website and give users a quick way to browse the document. Basically, there's a share button at the top. It'll warn you if your document's not yet public, so you can make it public. Wouldn't be of much use if it weren't public because people wouldn't be able to see it. And then it'll give you an HTML embed code. Oh, well, I lost it, but you can also get a link that you can just share with people. And then we're adding some social options like Twitter. And if you tweet a document cloud URL, it'll show an image of the first page and some of the metadata. So it's social media friendly. And yeah, that is mostly it on the beta. There's this URL bit.ly slash dc dash beta, which I'll drop in the chat, and that will give you a form to sign up to access the beta. I want to note that the document cloud beta still is coexisting alongside old document cloud. There will be a period of time during which they both exist while we onboard new users and get feedback, and that's where we're at now. So, yeah, please feel free to ask any questions or comments. All right. All right, Jason asked, will the new beta carry over all our current documents? It's a great question. And the answer is yes. Um, so we're working on, so for right now, when you sign up for the beta, it won't have any of your old documents, but we're actively working on and expect to finish an import tool soon, which will essentially import all your old documents into the new document cloud beta. Um, Rob asked if there's any changes to the URL structure. We are going to do our, we're gonna work really hard to keep the URL structure the same for embeds because 
we don't want all our valuable embeds to break on all the old documents. So we're going to make sure that that's completely compatible. Um, let me just stop my screen share too. All right, where did the chat go? Okay. Mancha asked, do editors and collaborators need to have their own account? Um, I believe the answer to that is yes, but it'll be pretty easy to sign up for an account with Muckrock once the, the beta goes live for everyone. And that'll be free for the free tier. And you'll be able to do that with collaborators. All right. Evan said, is the failed to process slash upload result of the processing pipeline you're trying to fix? Um, could you clarify a little in the chat, Evan? I don't know exactly what you're asking, but I'll come back to that. Um, let me jump over to the Q&A tab. All right, can a user download the PDF to his or her PC from the window you just showed? So, yeah, the beta will have, from the document viewer, there'll be a link to download the original document. Let me just share my screen of the beta, actually, and I can show that. So this is the document viewer, and right here is the link to the original document PDF, and that'll download right away. All right, Tom Meager asked, what if anything will change about the API? It's a great question. Um, we are doing, there's gonna be a lot of new things to the API. Basically everything that the Document Cloud front end can do, the API will be able to do, which wasn't the case previously. So basically anything will be possible with the API, but there will be some changes and hopefully changes for the best. But we'll have a generous window of support where we'll still support the old API. And we're actively working with open source libraries to migrate them over. All right, let's see. Anonymous attendee said, how well is this program working in different languages than English? And that is a great question. So Old Document Cloud supports a lot of languages via the OCR solution we're using. We haven't yet ported that over to the new beta, but we are planning to. Um, and we're definitely interested in users' feedback over about which languages they're interested in. And yeah, internationalization is really important to us as well because journalists work around the globe. All right. Did you make it easier to select all documents within a project? So the search tools, well, I don't have any documents with a lot of documents in them, but the search tools let you select all. Right now, select all will only do the current documents visible on the page, but we are working on a select all that will select all your documents within um, any project, even if it's like thousands of documents. That's not implemented just yet. Um, all right, Jason asked about overview docs. So the old document cloud has an integration with overview that lets you import document collections. I'm honestly not sure at the moment whether that will still work. I imagine we would want to make that um, as seamless as possible. I'm not sure what goes into that right now. All right, what are the open source libraries that we mentioned? So um, I guess you guys can see my screen. There's a document cloud Python library I'm aware of. I think it's just the pit package called document cloud. We didn't originally create it, but we are helping maintain it. Um, there's also some WordPress integrations I think there's some Ruby libraries. I'm not sure of the full list. And again, we're interested if you know some libraries to share those with us that you'd want us to support. There's also one called Pneumatic that helps you upload collections of documents. Um, Rob asked, any changes to the embed codes? Uh, yeah, so we're gonna, basically the embed codes will be pretty similar, but it's gonna be a little more simplified and just iframe based. 
the current embed um, includes like its own JavaScript bundle and is a little complicated to embed in some CMSs. So we're trying to simplify that as much as possible. Um, and then Jonathan asked about sets of documents and how you can embed collections of documents. Um, so that's a good question. We are still sort of fleshing that out, but I think we'd want to make projects embeddable. So you would be able to put your collection of documents together and organize it as a project and then share the project as an embed. Um, Jason asked about sorting documents by chronological or reverse chronological order. Great question. I'm sure you can tell the document cloud beta doesn't have any sort controls yet, but that's definitely incoming and you'll definitely be able to sort chronologically along with some other sort orders. Um, okay, let me see the chat. Um, changes. Do you allow hot links within notes? Asked Kurt. So I think you're specifying, you're, you're referring to being able to add links into notes. And I believe we support arbitrary HTML in a note. So if you create a note in the description, you can add something. And I think you can just put an href in there and it will it'll link. Um, so yeah, we're definitely interested in that still being HTML and thus giving you a lot of flexibility to add special content within notes. Great, are there any questions I'm missing? Don't be shy, feel free to ask anything. All right, so Jason asked about note highlights. Will we be able to single out sentences, phrases, or just blocks? Right now, annotations are still just rectangles, which means you can essentially select any region that's rectangular. Obviously, that's not ideal if you wanna do like a sentence that spans or isn't perfectly rectangular. So we're interested in seeing what we could improve there, but for now, their rectangles have worked well for us because they're, they have a nice embeddable form and you can then add your own commentary that clarifies that. Um, but we'll keep thinking about how we could improve singling out non-rectangular regions. All right, Boss asked, asked about setting dates for documents. I'm actually not too familiar with setting dates on old document cloud. Um, and then ordering by that. That's a good thing that I will be sure to look into. That's, um, you can definitely achieve some of that with tagging, but it's not as ideal as being able to order by that. Um, right, just seeing in the chat, Mark asked, is there any table support? By that, Mark, do you mean being able to like pull data out of tables or do you mean like uploading spreadsheets or things like that? Um, all right, so parsing tables, we don't do anything with that yet. I've definitely had some out there ideas on how we could incorporate some of those features, but it's not on the near term timeline. Um, in the meantime, there's definitely some open source tools like Tabula that do a really good job at parsing tables. Um, but it's it's definitely a feature that we'd love to have some support for later. Um, for Steven's question on Pacer, Michael, you might know that one better than I do. Um, Jason, you asked, when can we try it out? I'm going to drop the bit.ly link to everyone to sign up. You can access it pretty soon once we get you signed up. So let me just send that out real quick. Um, oh, let me, one second. 
right. Michael, did you have an answer on Stephen's question about Pacer? Yeah, Stephen, we're really interested in partnerships. So we've been talking a lot with the recap team. Uh, so Stephen asked, is anybody working on automated cataloging of court records like Pacer? Um, we are talking with some groups that have court records and other sort of automated flows. Um, and so we'd be really interested if you have ideas about documents that we should be automatically bringing in there. Um, but I would, I would check out the Free the Law Project and, uh, and recap. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to jump back. Somebody had a question about whether our new processing was causing issues with the old document cloud processing. And just to be clear, the beta is a completely separate server system. So things we're making on the new beta are not impacting the old document cloud. Um, and so that's just a result of the old system um, having scaling problems. Uh, if you're interested in signing up for the beta or, or that sort of thing, especially if you have a really large doc document dump, we would like to get you moved over to the beta because uh, it, it scales a lot more smoothly. Yeah, great. Um, all right, so Concha asked about embedding a section of a document and linking to the whole document for there. from there. Um, we are actively working on that at the moment. The beta is still missing that feature right now, and Old Document Cloud has that, but it is on our near-term roadmap, so we'll hopefully have some developments with that pretty soon. Michael, do you want to talk about the timeline for the new beta going live? Yeah, so Jason asked, uh, when does the beta go live to replace the old, old document cloud? It's going to be a staged process. So right now, all organizations that sign up for a new document cloud account that haven't used document in cloud in the past are getting uh, just loaded into the new document cloud. Uh, we're hoping to start migrating existing newsrooms over the next three or four weeks. Um, and so we're going to ask folks, hey, who wants to get onboarded first? And so if you're interested in that, please sign up via the, the bit.ly link that Dylan dropped. And we're finalizing our, our porting tools over the next couple of weeks. There's going to be a number of factors depending on sort of which features you've used in the past that'll help determine like when we can port you over. But we're looking at the next few weeks. Uh, we're hoping to have everybody ported over in about six months at which point we'll shut down the old document cloud. Yep. Great. Um, Kurt asked in the chat about the new access level system, saying it looks great. Thank you. Um, and asking if there's a way to silo a freelance researcher to one project or doc and not have them see the other collaborators. So I think that is what the view role essentially does. So when you manage collaborators on a doc, you can add someone and give them view only access and they, they won't be able to see this manage collaborators window. So we definitely have that, that use case in mind for that. And then, right, good to hear from boss about applying it within the document titles. So I guess for that date question earlier, you could put like the date in proper ISO format as a prefix on the title. And then once we have title sort, you'd be able to sort by that. People use our tools in, in ways that continue to surprise us. So <laughs> I hadn't heard of that technique. That's great. All right. Does anyone have more questions, comments, feedback? All right. Will there be changes or improvements to the functionality of the document cloud search engine when it's embedded within our websites, Boolean features, etc.? So if you mean search, do you mean like the search within the document viewer, Kurt? Um, essentially, the, the new search features will work within the document viewer in the beta. And when everything's ported over, those improvements and Boolean features will be available within the viewer as well.
Thank you so much, everybody. Really great questions. We're really excited to continue to roll this out to more and more newsrooms in the coming weeks and months. Um, and so if you are interested, uh, I'll send a follow-up email with the link to, to get uh, put on the fast track for the update. Um, and thank you so much for the support and, and all the feedback. Please uh, take a chance to, to take out the survey. Let us know your uses of Document Cloud, being able to kind of showcase to our funders how the, the site's important in your journalism is so, so valuable for us. Um, and being able to continue knowing what we should work on and being able to continue working on that. Um, and we will post this uh, presentation so that if you want to share this with your colleagues or anybody else, uh, we'll make that really easy. But great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys so much. It was a pleasure. Looking forward to seeing what you guys do with it. Stay safe and healthy. Take care.